Hello and welcome to Femme Fatale by Helen. Uh, I'm here with this very beautiful woman. I met her as one of this meta spas. Uh, she's from the private suite, which is her practice, and she's a very famous injector, and that's basically how I met her because I am very in love with cosmetic, improving myself, and then women taking care of themselves. Uh, so welcome, Cheyenne. Um, I really appreciate you being here. Maybe you can introduce yourself and tell uh, tell about the people, which area you're practicing, and uh, and then I will ask the next, next questions from you. For sure, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm Cheyenne, I'm the CEO and founder of the Private Suite in Los Angeles and soon to be Orange County. Um, also, as Helen mentioned, a celebrity injector, and I've been doing this for 15 years, and every day that I get to create beauty is a beautiful day, so I, get, I feel very blessed to get to do what I do every day. Yeah. It's, it's very beautiful. I, me, myself, I'm fascinated by woman beauty. Also, as a woman or as a man, as whoever, taking care of yourself. You know, you know I feel sometimes, you know, someone says, oh, like, like why, do you have, why do you have to go get a nose job? I, or why do you have to do this laser? Or why do you have to inject? Aren't you happy with yourself? And it's like... Do you, I, my response is like, do you upgrade your phone? You know, your app needs to be upgraded all the time, or you stay with the, your old phone for the rest of your life. This is my body. I'm going to take care of my body. hundred percent. Right? Does your car need maintenance? Yeah. Absolutely. So your face and your body need maintenance too. Yeah. If you want to age younger, you know, and that is the Correct. trend of aesthetics today, you know. Correct. Age younger and age younger naturally, not yes. fake younger. Yes. You know? You know, I think we have a, there is some misunderstanding between like why do you have to go uh, through plastic surgery or why do you have to go through this kind of procedures, you know, oh, you look fake. Like I'm sure, I don't know if you, since you're in the business, you might, I don't know how much you hear about it, like the, you know, from, from other women or other men, I'm like, oh, you do too much to yourself or like what you do, like stay natural. So what is your opinion about that? Like, how do you take it when people have opinion about, I don't know, you look fake when you do injecting to yourself or you look fake when you do plastic surgery? You know, I think natural means different things to different people. So mm -hmm. there's that, you know, one of my good friends and clients, um, she has had, I think, seven surgeries since October oh. and her goal is that that is her aesthetic mm. right she wants to look like that she's had her mm. boob done she said two fate slips she's had her butt done nice. um, she's had abdominal etching you name it she's had it all done she's also in the public eye nice. and that is the look that she likes yeah. right so um, is it what I call natural? No, mm. but it's the aesthetic that she likes. She likes. I think um, natural, as I mentioned, natural means different things to different people. Mm. So as you embark on this journey of making yourself feel better and mm. looking good, you have to find somebody that has the same aesthetic as you, mm. and and find you know what that means. I mm. think we're seeing a lot of filler fatigue, those puffy, fillery, pillowy faces. Don't get me wrong, Chrissy Teigen is a lovely woman, but that is. A filler face mm -hmm. you know that is an overfilled face and mm -hmm. that's not my definition of natural you know mm -hmm. I want people to look like themselves mm -hmm. just rested and the changes that we make are subtle just adjustments and facial proportions and maintaining characteristic facial identity so mm -hmm. they look good and feel better and um, what's very I think unique about my practice and what sets us apart from everyone else is that it really is a whole body approach from the inside out. We work with cellular medicine doctors, yeah. functional nutritionists, so it really is looking good and feeling good from the inside out. Tell me more about you know the steps of what do you do in your practice and like what do you mean like from inside and from outside. 
Sure. So um, we specialize in bioregenerative aesthetics. So I work a lot with the collagen stimulating products. So products that produce your own natural collagen over time. Mm -hmm. You know, the hyaluronic acid fillers, all the gels, the juvederms and the restylins um, and the RHA fillers that are on the market. They're great. They don't treat the cause of aging, right? They mm -hmm. treat the symptom of aging, mm -hmm. which is the volume loss. Mm -hmm. um, all the biostimulatory products treat the cause of aging, which is loss of collagen. So especially we live in California. Right, we're all obsessed with looking good, and we eat organic, we eat healthy, we go to the gym. So, I think if you're going to be putting something in your face mm -hmm. or your butt or anywhere in your body, don't you want it to be doing something for you? Mm -hmm. So, we work with products you know, from stem cells to exosomes to polynucleotides, mm -hmm. um, all things that help regenerate your own tissue. Oh, nice! So, you're growing you. I like that. Um, in your practice, is it only you, or you have other doctors or other people be being involved with the case? So I have a medical director and I just hired a nurse and I'm sort of slowly expanding my team. Uh, that is a challenge in, in mm -hmm. LA. Nobody Absolutely. seems to, uh, the work ethic is a different situation. Absolutely, I agree with you. <laughs> yes. People want to work from home. They don't want to come to the office and doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what they do. It's like... Or how well you pay them. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, there is something got lost here and I cannot put finger, but there is something got lost here that people lost interest of working. They just want to be a millionaire without working. I could not agree more. Right. And it's very disheartening and very yeah. discouraging. You know, I'm from New York, so I think the hustle is innate. And I don't mm -hmm. like that word hustler because I think it has a negative connotation. Uh -huh. But you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's like you get up, you go to work. And, you know, I think when you really don't know what to do, that is the best time for creativity to sort of set in. You figure, mm -hmm. you figure it out. And um, I'm always taken aback that when I interview people or I meet staff that they're not as excited as I am. It's like what we're doing is amazing. Yeah. How could you not be? And yeah. no, no one will work. That's the biggest lesson I've learned being oh, in wow. business. Oh, wow. No one will care as much. No one will work as hard yeah. and no one will want the best outcome like mm. I do. So mm. um, I'm sort of learning expanding my team and sort of figuring out as I go along at the mm -hmm. moment. I think uh, I decided I'm going to use the summer as a trial period mm -hmm. and then in September decide who I'm keeping and who stays, who goes and, mm -hmm. and how we move forward. Got it. Yeah. So as a female business owner, I don't, I don't think being a male or female, I'm not sure it has any role in it, but so what are your top three challenges? In just being a business owner or a female business owner? Mm -hmm. Combination. Uh, hiring staff, 100%, is mm. number one. I would say hiring staff, and then I think the normal growing pains that happen as the business um, evolves, you know, things just, it becomes a larger and larger and larger uh, animal, both in good ways and bad ways. You know, mm -hmm. life life comes at you in different ways, right? And mm -hmm. in unexpected ways. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's better. So I think it's important just to stay curious, stay humble, and, and always keep looking outward, you know? Mm -hmm. How did you get into this business? How did you want to be an injector? Like, what influenced you to just say, you know what, um, you're a nurse. Have you ever practiced as a regular nurse? So I'm a PA, so it's a little bit different. So I have a master's degree in health okay. sciences. And when I graduated PA, when I graduated PA school, um, I knew I wanted to work in plastic surgery. I just didn't know what area of plastic surgery. So okay. I worked a lot um, in dermatology, mm. reconstructive surgery, mm. um, cosmetic surgery. And then I operated with a lot of plastic surgeons. And then slowly, as aesthetics was starting to gain traction, then I was doing OR, operating room, oh, nice. and uh, the med spa, nice. and then I started to do that full time. Nice. And then nice. I became a trainer for two of the major companies that make the products that we use. Oh. Um, so that's also super exciting and interesting. It sort of gets you out of your bubble, and you get to meet other injectors and share all the all the oh. knowledge that I've learned along the way. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Um, what are the top two uh, plastic surgeon you worked here with them? That the one that you liked so much. You know, um, they all offer different things. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very interesting and exciting world full of personalities. So mm -hmm. I think the challenge of working in aesthetics is finding the personalities that you vibe 
best with. Yeah. Because, you know. Yeah, of course. We all have like completely different personalities. So I need to be, you know, in harmony with you. You might be the most amazing person, but, you know, our frequency is in a different uh, level. So you just need to make sure also with who you can work the best. Right. And who understands you and mm. you understand them. And, mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you have any favorite? Um, I would say probably the most influential to me was when I first arrived in Los Angeles. I work with Dr. Paul Nassif. He's uh, oh, okay. well known for yes, yes, rhinoplasties. Yes. He's the yes. king of rhinoplasty. Um, he really inspired me a lot and I admire his work ethic and oh. uh, we definitely vibe well together oh, from definitely. my time there. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. He's amazing. I am in love with plastic surgery. Um, I want to ask you your opinion about um, actually, do you, like, for example, believe in facelift, let's say? A hundred percent. Okay. Do you think a young person, like, at what age you need to be fa having a facelift? When you're old or when you're younger? I think there's so much that we can do non-invasively now mm -hmm. that you can delay the process of having a facelift or hopefully never have a facelift. Mm. But again, also someone's you know biological age may not match their chronological age. Mm -hmm. So um, it really just depends on the person, the body mm -hmm. type, their skin tone and their mm -hmm. skin texture. Also, people maybe don't want to commit to the non-invasive process. They'd rather just go under the knife mm -hmm. um, and others would do anything to not go under the knife. So um, I think the younger somebody gets on the anti-aging rejuvenation train, uh, the least likelihood that they'll have to have a, a facelift. Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. I kind of, I started my Botox and all like preventive steps, maybe around 30 and I got really into it by around like 35 and I had lots of acne. I mean, you it would like whoosh, like I still I have lots of scars, scars yeah. but it's still I have done so much I have done from fat transfer CO2 Morpheus Morpheus you yeah. name it I have done it and this is the scar that is left and used to be very very deep and you know and I want to say like when I look at my pictures now I, I feel like I look younger compared to five years ago I'm sure you know yeah. like I fool myself. I look at the picture and I'm like, I'm very happy that I did all this and I'm continuing, continuing doing all of this because the quality of my skin, the texture of my skin, how, even how I feel about myself is not about, um, it's not about, oh, I feel insecure of getting old. It feels about, I want to look the best for myself totally. at any time. So so for let's say for the texture of your skin what will be the top three procedure that you will recommend i think uh first of all start with a really great medical skincare regimen there are mm -hmm. a lot of people that don't do that and nothing looks as good in your 50s as sun protection does in your 20s mm -hmm. so that will save you a lot mm -hmm. and then um, there's so much we can do there are tons of energy-based devices now mm -hmm. that help can help um, you know restructure and regenerate the skin also a lot of the biostimulatory products that we work with can do that as well so really mm -hmm. every patient is different and uh, that's what's unique about my practice it really mm -hmm. is bespoke and more boutique where mm -hmm. we spend uh, it's a whole comprehensive approach to, to wellness yeah mm -hmm. like for example like I feel like with co2 I got this a major like it looked so different when I did the CO2 on my skin. What do you think about that? I think there's a tremendous amount of downtime with the CO2 lasers. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they explain that to you or one how you... week. I had one, my like until I shed it and I had a new skin. It was about the one week, but I don't think he went very deep. Okay, yeah, it's yeah. usually a good two to four week recovery. I think CO2 is great if you have like horrible acne scars or mm -hmm. acne or things that um, that you're just if you're ready to it's a major procedure so mm. you know there are many ways to slice the apple it really just dis depends on the patient the downtime they can have you know i w work a lot with actress actresses and mm. they can't have four weeks off or six I weeks see, off so you can do do it in other ways mm -hmm. without the downtime but if you can take the downtime i think it's an excellent mm. procedure when you look at people you're like hmm, i know what you do with your skin or hmm 
Your your lips, your eyes. Hmm. I do. I probably that was one of your questions. It was like, what's the first thing you notice about people? Yeah. And I'm like the asymmetry of their faces. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you go suggest suggest to them? Oh, you should do this and that because I'm not in that business, but I'm too nosy. I'm like, mm, I think you should get a boob job, or I I think you should get this. You will be so happy. No, I don't say that. But if people ask, when people find out what I do, they usually ask me. So then I'll yeah. sort of offer up some well you know if you're interested you know this is a great starting point and then you know it's a it's not a sprint right it's a marathon so it's mm, a, it is it is a marathon it's a ongoing beauty plan so you mm-hmm. know do just little tweakments along the way mm-hmm. i think will help you f- uh in the long run and also will save you from having a facelift mm. tell me what do you see what should i do what should my next procedure to be i think you look fantastic you Thank have beautiful you. skin a nice full face good skin tone and texture so if i mean you're i can't see your acne scars in this lighting okay. but if that's something that's still bothering you you know continue to work on that with the energy-based devices for sure okay do you do you like um, rf uh, micro needling i do there are so many uh devices out one of my favorite ones right now um it's called soft wave so mm-hmm. it's a little bit different it uses ultrasound technology mm-hmm. um to tone and tighten the skin and reduce wrinkles so mm-hmm. very different than radiofrequency uh, mm-hmm. microneedling so that's a collagen they, they both produce collagen what i love most about the soft wave is there's no downtime mm. so you can have the procedure done and you could go on tv right away and mm. no one will notice How about because you know I had to, I had done fat transfer on my face, mm-hmm. so did you need it? Did you have like a gaunt face, uh, or you just didn't want to do filler? I didn't want to do filler. Okay. So what I did is because at some point when I was younger, around I don't know, thirty three, thirty four, like without needing it, I started putting you know fillers, and then after like three four years, I did not like the, the look, look yeah. of like I felt like. They put too much filler on my face and I was young. I'm like, like, I don't want to look like this. So I removed all of it. And then uh, I did a faint fat transfer on my face. Did it, and did it take? It took, it, I, I feel like it stays good for a year. And then after a year, either you need to repeat it or you need to g- gain weight or like, Usually if they repeat it, uh, uh, only about 40% of the fat takes, usually mm. after the first round. Did they explain that to you when they were doing the grafting? No, I think he did it, he did like way over, so in order... For, uh, for, so you look crazy for a while. I looked crazy for six months. I avoided... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i avoided any kind of, and you know what i actually did it it was when it was COVID. my look did not matter what is it oh my look did not matter as much and You're under like, a mask who cares yeah i'm yeah. under a mask and it was like oh my god it was scary yeah i don't necessarily agree with that approach there's no need to overfill someone but i understand the reasoning behind it i did not know that i'm gonna look like that because yeah. i saw some pictures that they were so subtle and then by the time i woke up i'm like what is this but i have to say i have to say i like the result of how it looked after when it got subtle you know i liked it so much um But definitely, I think taking care of the face and the fat, distribution of the fat. And, you know, it's like, I I love maintaining on every six months because that's how it makes you look younger. And it's great. Yeah. It's, your, it's your own body, right? Mm-hmm. So it's always great to use your body's own natural substances. Mm-hmm. So fat is great. Um, the only downside with it on people that are very thin, they don't have enough fat to graft, Mm -hmm. but we have other modalities for them. So I think it's a great option. Um, I just think you have to manage patient expectations. Mm -hmm. Like I I wish they would have told you that only 40% of it Mm -hmm. takes and Mm -hmm. that you need to repeat it over time, but it's a great option. You know, anytime Mm -hmm. you can use your own body substances, I think that's the great way to go for sure. Um, You know, one of my question was with fat transfer and then micro needlings or So do they get rid of your fat? Can they affect affect the fat that you have in your face? Can they get melted? No. So a lot of there were a lot of uh, there's a lot of chatter about that, right? That energy devices can melt the filler mm-hmm. and melt the fat, but in several studies that were published, no, that can't happen. Yeah. So yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting because I think that was one of the reason I kind of stopped using the micro needling 
RS microneedling like about eight, nine months ago, I was like, I was getting worried if I, about keep losing the fat that I injected it. No, no, just you're talking about just st- straight microneedling, right? Not uh, Morpheus, just straight. Morpheus, Morpheus. Oh, Morpheus. Okay, yeah, that's a little bit more invasive than just a microneedling pen. Yeah, yeah. the Morpheus I mean, mm. talking about. What do you think about the Morpheus? Uh, you know, it's not, I don't, a lot of people love it. Um, I don't recommend it to my patients just because mm-hmm. I hear there are a lot of people they like get breakouts from it. They have a lot mm-hmm. of, um, issues with mm-hmm. re- recovery and downtime, but I think it's a, a great procedure for the right patient. I just mm-hmm. work with other devices that I think, um, offer less downtime. That's yeah. the key for me, for my clientele, that's, that's everything less downtime. Yeah. Nobody like wants that. to be like out, of, out of commission for two to four weeks. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I'm going to come and see you. Great. Anytime. Yay. <laughs> you know, um, so one of my next project is uh, to open a meta spa. So if we were Ooh. like in the process of in the middle of it, we might want to do it in Calabasas or Encino, but that was a project that I was working but right now I am, uh, we just did a soft launch with the pharmacy. Okay. So we're just finishing everything regarding the pharmacy. And as soon as it sets with everything, and then I'm moving back to the med spa. The med spa? Yeah. Wow, how exciting. Like, because I have so much passion for plastic surgery and totally. new education. Yeah. You know. 